I grew up in New York City and was inducted into the Army when I was 18 uh, and spent three years there. During the 60s, during the McCarthy era, era, we were really unhappy uh, with uh, what was happening in the U.S. and constantly worried about the potential of having to go uh, to Vietnam. So Linda and I uh, moved to Canada in 1964. We flew into Saskatchewan in our own plane. We were the first people to ever immigrate into Saskatoon from a small plane. I first taught at the University of Saskatchewan and then moved to neurosciences at SFU in 1966. And eventually we ended up in Anmore in the 70s, where at that time there's only 250 people who lived here. It was a rural area but within striking distance of the city. When you came to Anmore, you left Ioko and started up Sunnyside Road, and it was like the city disappeared. It just fell away behind you, and you were in the country. I became the uh, director of Electoral Area B uh, primarily because it was clear that someone had to protect the semi-rural integrity of this area. In many ways, this was like being the mayor. Except that the hunters used to laugh. We used to call him the emperor because he didn't have a council, so he didn't have to argue with anybody about decisions, except for the community, of course. Now, Bob uh, and Bobby Hunter both worked for Greenpeace, and uh, they were dear friends and neighbors to uh, myself and Linda. We raised our families side by side and hung out a lot. And uh, their whole concept of any society was to maintain the peacefulness and the natural environment of the society. And this is what we thought should be and more. When the provincial government floated the idea of putting a liquefied natural gas plant in Ioko, it really galvanized ourselves in terms of becoming political. We with the hunters decided that we really had to do something to protect our small community. Well, around 1987, we all sat down, the hunters and ourselves, in the basement of the hunter's house. And after many bottles of wine and beer, we finally came up with the Anmore concept. In a nutshell, the idea was to retain a small-scale government and the incredible wilderness and environment of Anmore at that time, and essentially try to keep us from getting swallowed up by Port Moody. The 80s were a time of forced incorporation. The province was demanding that small municipalities move into larger municipalities, for example, West Bank into Kelowna and some other areas in the province. So it was a very real threat that Anmore could be forced into either a joining with either Port Moody or Coquitlam at that time. In the end, this meant Anmore was incorporated, and later the boundaries were extended to include Bunsen Lake, and the mountains between Anmore and Coquitlam. One aspect of the Anmore concept that was really important was that all of us had to buy minimum five acres when we came to the community. So that if we had been forced to incorporate with Port Moody or an adjacent municipality, those five acres would have been then rezoned into lot size development, which would have caused the people who were living here to leave because they wouldn't be able to afford the property taxes that would be involved when their large acres were divided up into lot sizes. It also meant, of course, that their lifestyle would not be able to continue. I was the mayor until 2009, and I'm proud of having developed a cooperative interaction with neighboring communities. I always thought of Anmore as a model of how the diversity of opinion could be accepted with goodwill and friendliness, a model in my own mind of what Canada is all about.